Good morning, thank you for joining me. Welcome to June's Beauty Spot video. I do a monthly beauty video. Um, could be anything related to beauty at all. And this month it is a full face of makeup. In fact, this full face of makeup, which you are seeing here. Um, if you want to see a step-by-step -step with all the products, keep watching. Okay, full face of makeup. I've got a couple of new bits to try and I've got some oldies but goldies to try full face from start nice and neutral nice and summery nice and glowy we want a bit of summer glow got my mirror here i'm going to attempt to mostly use you as a um mirror but I've also i should probably say at the beginning of this i have had my eyebrows microbladed recently so i won't be putting anything on my eyebrows because they are just as i like them right to start with Actually, just let me grab my glasses from over here so I can tell you shade names and everything. I will put everything that I use in the description box below, but I'll, we'll obviously talk about them as we go through them. I'm going to start with this. This is new. I bought a set of three of the e.l.f. Putty Primers, Putty Primer Trio, um, to try out. I was particularly interested in the poreless one. That is the one I want to try today because I've noticed a lot of pores around this area when i put my makeup on i feel like my pores are very pronounced at the moment so i'd like them to be a bit less so right definitely need glasses to see which is which okay it also comes with a matte primer and a luminous putty primer um that's good things about these so let's give this a little go that's what it looks like it's pink and Oh, it's quite hard. It's um, quite a thick cream. So just going to, if I'm looking down here, it's because my mirror is down here. Let me see if I can move it that way a little bit so I'm not looking off to the side too much. It's got a little bit of slip to it, not too much. Um, feels quite pleasant going on, not particularly moisturising, definitely more of the slippy type of primer than moisturizing but oh i should also say i've got my skincare on an spf before i started um put that on about half an hour ago right i think that's let me just put a little bit more in those problem areas just the areas that i want to see less of my pores to give it a fighting chance there we are so my next step at this point is let me just Maybelline Anti-Age Eye Eraser in the shade Brighton. Um, you've seen me use this before if you've been with me for a while, and I like to get that right. These are the I don't tend to get particularly dark bits under my eyes, but just in these very inside corners, I get my dark eyes are quite deep set, and so I find that my the most of my darkness comes in there so I like to get that right in there and then I just take a little sponge like that and sort of press that in and blend it a little bit but that I find that just brightens up my inner corners of my eye which are the darkest bits so that's a step that I always like to include in this routine so as you can see, that's made an immediate difference to those areas. It's just really um, lightened it up, which is good. Right, for foundation, I am going to use a mixture of Fuera. I've done a full review of this particular foundation. It's very good value for money. Um, if I remember, I'll link the review up there. And I'm going to mix that with this, which I talked about in a recent favourites video. It's Jekka Black glow drops and this is vegan in case anybody's interested in that and i think in the summer this is a great combination i really like the sort of glowy finish this gives my skin um it's very light reflecting this stuff and this foundation is quite matte and i think in summer it's nice to be a little bit more glowy and luminous isn't it so i just put the foundation on this is in shade 102 nude I use this which is a little bit pale at the moment but I'm still getting away with it then I'm just going to add a little bit of that into it and I'm just going to mix it on the back of my hand with my finger together um, and then dot it onto my face you 
still got a little bit on the back of my hand and I'm going to use this brush which I again mentioned in a favourites video just rubbing the excess off my finger onto there. Um, it's XX Revolution this brush I can't remember what it's called but I'll put it in the description box. I've been using this for my, for my foundation for a couple of months now and I absolutely love it. It gives me the it, with the least effort it gives me the nicest finish on my foundation that I've had for ages. I really, really, I can't recommend this brush highly enough. I think particularly if you're quite new to makeup, I think this just makes putting foundation on and blending it out super, super easy. Oh, I do love foundation. It just improves things so much, does it not? It's funny, the mirror, I'm further away in the mirror I look so much better in the mirror than I do in the viewfinder. I often find that when I do makeup videos. I think, God, I look bloody awful. I think the white balance is a bit off on the camera as well at the moment. But no matter, we will persevere. All right, I'm just using the excess off the back of my hand to go around that at the areas where I need a little bit more coverage just building it up, which I find is generally around my nose and on my cheeks there. Just looking to see, I actually feel like, sorry, I'm just moving the mirror closer so I can look at my pores. I feel like that has minimized my pores in this area. Let me move you forward again. So I've got the door open behind you if my hair's blowing, this is the wind. Um, I would say, God, that's terrifying, that my pores in this area are actually looking a lot better. I think that's a pretty good primer, you know. Oh God, you've gone back too far now. Come back. There we are. So that's foundation and I feel like perhaps I could do with a little, I don't think I used enough for that. So I'm just going to put a little bit more of that. I'm looking a little bit matte. I'd like to be a bit more glowy. A little bit more onto the back of my hand, which I'm going to rub in and then transfer onto the brush and just sort of tap that in as a sort of finishing yeah that's better for sure that gives me a little bit more glowiness i think that's such a good base i very much like that combination at the moment right that base and then going to powder and because the weather's been so hot recently, I am using, I don't always use powder on top of foundation these days. I think as we get uh, older, we can definitely look cakey. And I like just a very light covering of pressed powder. And this is the one I'm using currently. This is Sainsbury's Boutique range of makeup, um, which I was very disappointed in overall. I couldn't even find anything I wanted to buy, which is most like most unlike me this is the illuminating strobing powder and it does have a little bit of glow in it i don't know how well you're going to be able to see that so it's quite a nice powder for summer i'm going to use a big fluffy revolution brush don't know what the, i don't this is available anymore but just sort of circle that around and then i'm just going to mostly concentrating on that central area where us ladies can glow sweat glow perspire a little um but oh, all over as well um just a spattering of that just to sort of set things all right my next step is powder under my eyes i am using this what is this called this is the one i got from yesterday skin food peach powder this is quite a cult product and it's very very finely milled it's translucent but it looks white in here and i use this fabulous little tool which is a sponge it comes in a set of two from amazon i've talked about these in a favorites video before should probably blow that because it's still got powder on it from yesterday and i just dip this in to the powder tap it off like that and then go under my eyes if i don't powder under my eyes i get raccoon panda eyes from mascara and eye makeup almost immediately if i do powder under my eyes i don't <laughs> <laughs> that was informative wasn't it um so i always always do this step particularly in summer um unfortunately powdering under your eyes at my age is always going to give you some i'm just sort of blending that in a little bit it can end up with too much but yeah that's fine um it's 
always going to give you, uh, exacerbate the wrinkles under your eyes. There's not a lot you can do about this, but this powder is particularly good for it. It's very finely milled and it doesn't sink in too much. It's a very light um, thing that still does its job. I find it very good at soaking up the oil, which is really the reason for powder, isn't it, I guess. Right, next, bronzer. I'm using a Beauty Pie bronzer, so the Quantum Bronzer in Goldie Luxe. Um, I've currently got Beauty Pie, if you don't know, it is a subscription beauty website. Um, I was a member for a long time. In fact, I've done a video about um, Beauty Pie and I will, I can't, I can't do this and talk at the same time. I will link the Beauty Pie video if I can up here, if I can find it. And, um, if you're interested in that, I've paused my subscription at the moment simply because I had enough, I didn't need anything else, so I've stopped it for the moment. But I suspect I will rejoin because I particularly rate um, several of their products, including this one. This is a lovely matte bronzer, as you can see. I'm just going around the perimeter of my face in sort of a three motion. So you do a three like that under the jawbone to try and give us a bit of definition here where everything's a bit saggy and then the same with under the cheekbones as well um just for definition and then a bit of them um, around around the top of your face as well next is blusher this was originally a viewer recommendation it's one i talk about quite a lot and use a lot it's the max factor miracle touch creamy blush in the shade i don't the soft pink i think it is and I like the size of this. It's tiny and very good for traveling. I'm going to use an e.l.f. stippling brush, which looks like that. This is a cream blush. Again, I always say cream blusher is so nice on our skin as we get older. I think cream products are very flattering. In fact, I've currently got my eye on, I say currently, I've been lusting after it for a couple of years, the Chanel cream bronzer that people rave about. And it's about £40, but... I think it's my birthday in August and my parents always give me some money and I think that might be on my treat myself list for my birthday money this year. I very much want to try that. I always think with big, big purchases, not big purchases, but you know, um, higher end makeup purchases that are more than one would normally spend on a day to day basis on makeup. I like to if I still want something after a long time, for example, this has been on my pin, I've got a Pinterest board for things I want, beauty products I want. This has been on my Pinterest board for a couple of years and I very much still want it. So I feel like that's a sign that you do want it. You know, quite often I'll put various eyeshadow palettes generally onto my Pinterest board and then I lose interest in them and don't want them after a while. So I think that's a good way if you sort of, pause rather than purchase and see if you really want it i think it's a good way of buying that works for me anyway right sorry i'm talking so much that i'm not showing you this is a beauty pie cream eyeshadow stick and i'm using this it's in the shade vanilla whirl i don't know if that's still available but um i'm using it as an eye primer and it's actually quite nice for evening out color as well as you can see just going over the eye sort of all over in quite a messy fashion and then I'm gonna blend that in with a finger um, blend it in and up and I find this makes quite a nice eye primer if you have a lot of discoloration on your eyelids try a cream shadow stick because I don't, don't have loads of discoloration but I certainly find that this evens everything out a little. Right, we are using today this Revolution eyeshadow palette which is called Forever Flawless Timeless Fantasy. I will link this below, obviously I'm linking everything below, um, however don't be put off by the photograph on the website which is appalling, it doesn't look anything like the reality. Very cool toned, this is what this looks like, it doesn't look like the photograph on the website. Um, this has lots of lovely shades um, that you can do a real simple one eyeshadow look with. This lovely rose gold colour here just all over and blended up a bit into the crease. This very neutral sort of shimmer there. Um, some really nice matte colours that you can do the same with. It's very, it's a nice palette for just doing really simple looks. I'm going to do something a little bit more involved today just because, why not? Um, and just to show you sort of some of the various colours. So I'm going to st start with this colour up at the top here. This is called Chic. And I've got a sort of that sort of brush. It's a good brush for just 
swirling into that actually I've got this mirror now I can do that and I'm just going into my crease I'm going a little bit above my crease because I have quite hooded eyes and I just want to get that color sort of in there and blended upwards a little bit just to give your eye shape a little bit of definition as we get older definition is very much one of the things that is important to have and that, as you can see that's not got a lot of color in it you're not noticing a lot of color change but you are probably noticing it i'm just going to use a fluffy brush to blend that out and upwards a little bit um it just enhances the shape of your eyes if you like if that's making any sense right that's done and then my camera has taken to suddenly turning itself off i don't know what that's all about but it's starting to irritate me i'm gonna go in with this shade down here which is called lust which is quite a neutral beigey sort of shimmer and i'm going to use a flat brush like that's a sigma e something or other again it's rubbed off because i've had it for so many years um let's get some, some of that onto there and straight across but concentrating more on the inner two thirds of the mobile lash uh, mobile lid mobile lash what on earth is that what we're talking about that's a really lovely i love brightening shades on my lids i do, I, I do like a bit of shimmer on my eyelids i think not not glitter but definitely a bit of shimmer i think just brightens up your face bring you in just a little bit more so you can see that i don't know how well this is going with the light but yeah we've got then i'm going to darken up the outer corners of my eyes and go a little bit underneath and i'm going to use this darkest shade here um this is called style um this one would probably work as well but because i'm on camera and um things that don't show up particularly brilliantly always um, in the reality of how they look. Did th that was a lengthy sentence that didn't make a lot of sense. I'm going to use the darker one because I feel like that would be easier to see. Sorry, I'm just deciding which brush to use. I'm just going to use that brush, which is quite fluffy, but a little more directional maybe. And I'm just going to tap that on to that out a bit. The thing you want to concentrate on with eye makeup um, is to blend upwards and outwards but not downwards um took me uh, everybody's eye shapes are different and everybody or almost everybody i think has differently shaped eyes it will take you a while to get used to the shapes of your eyes and learn to do makeup accordingly i think everybody would do, do you agree with that i think it's um hard to i'm just fluffy brush again and i'm just blending that upwards and inwards here um, i'm making sure not to go i'm sort of if there was a line you'd have a line like that and not go below that or downwards you don't want to drag your eye downwards it wants to be pulled up um, our eyes are saggy enough as we get older <laughs> Now, where I've got that line at the top, I feel like that's not that's a little bit dark. So I'm going to just grab a little bit of this colour here, which is called Refined, on the same fluffy brush, and just go along that sort of top line of the where the eye blended the eyeshadow up to, just to soften that line so it doesn't look quite so harsh. I'm going to do that on both sides and. Um, feel like that just really softens it and then again if you can see the join on my eye between the two colors there feel like that looks a little bit harsh so I'm going to just use I'm going to use um this color here Lux, this one um which is sort of it's a shimmer but it's in between it's a darker shade than the one I've got on my lid and I'm just gonna pop some of that sort of in the middle where those two colors join um, just to soften that join as well so it doesn't look quite so pronounced and then once I've done that with my finger just blend across the top of it again with the brush 
Now I'm going to go under the eye a little bit. I'm going to use this slightly less dark colour, the one called Desire, in the top there. Um, I feel like I've been putting more bright colours under my eye recently and I feel like I don't want to go too dark under my eye. I feel like it's a little bit ageing, um, possibly. So I've been, I just go again, probably two thirds of the way across. And this is with a really stumpy little brush. I don't know how well that's showing up, but I love that brush for under my eyes. And then I will tend to just go under that just to smudge it a little bit. And I generally do that with the side of a finger, just exactly like that. Right, that's eyes eyeshadow done. Um, I haven't got a black eyeshadow. I usually tight line my top waterline with an angled brush like that and a black eyeshadow. But I haven't got one here, so I'm going to use again that dark brown here, the one called Desire, and I lick my brush like that, and I'm sure I shouldn't, but that's what I do. And I just go right into that top lash line just to darken that up. And I find that so much easier than trying to do eyeliner. Sorry, it's hard to talk and do that. Um, so much easier than trying to do eyeliner on the um, top of my lashes. I really like that step, I feel like that just really accentuates my eyes and um, that's something that I like to do every day. Right, next is mascara, it's Tarte Cam Tarte's Mascara, which is called Lights Camera Lashes. Um, I like this, I don't like it as much as my Essence Lash Princess Mascara, but I've been using this recently, it's got quite a big brush like that and it takes me ages to faff around with it, so I'm going to do this off camera. Right, mascara is done. Um, I do like this mascara very much. Um, it's more expensive than the Essence Lash Princess and it's harder work to get it on. I feel like it has a slightly nicer finish once I've faffed about with it. Um, this is only one coat and you can build it up. Finally, lipstick. I'm using this Revlon one. I will tell you what, I think I've talked about this before. It's called Pink in the Afternoon. Um, I've been trying to use brighter lipstick. I feel like, I've talked about this as well, I feel like brighter lipstick is just a little bit uplifting to the face. There we are. That's. And just because I'm making a video, I thought I'd put a bit of gloss on the top as well. I'm using this NYX, this is um, newly launched, um, NYX This Is Milky Gloss in the shade Pink Shake. Doesn't look very pink, does it? To me, that is not very pink, but hey-ho. Um, I love a milky gloss, so I was excited to try this, and I do quite like it. I, by itself, it doesn't look particularly milky, but it just gives lipstick a really nice finish. feel like that makes my lips look just a little bit fuller, which again, as we get older, we all need, don't we? Right, let me push you back a little bit, not push you back, zoom you out so you can get an idea of what it looks like. That is the finished look, a mess, I cannot tell you. I'm just going to finish it off with this um, priming Rimmel spray um, just because it's really hot weather at the moment and I don't want my makeup sliding down my face 10 minutes after I've put it on. It's the two-in-one primer and setting spray. Hairspray for the face, as they say. Right, well, that's the look. That's it. Done. Ready for the day. Ready to spend the day at home now. <laughs> Not going anywhere today. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, as I said, I'll link everything in the description box below. And if there's anything you'd like to see me try or do beauty-wise for next month's beauty spot video, um, do let me know on any particular subjects you'd like me to talk about. Someone suggested my top 10 eye palettes, which I might actually do next month because that will be quite fun. Me and eye palettes. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.